responsive reading. We are standing. Okay, we are number 413. He set my feet on a rock. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. He set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. Blessed is the man who makes the Lord his trust. Many, O oh Lord my God, are the wonders you have done. May all who see you rejoice in what I give you. May those who love your salvation always say, The Lord be exalted. We welcome you all to the Malkin Town Christian Church worship, uh, especially those who are here. And it's good to see this number, good to see some of you back that haven't seen for about 14 or 15 weeks. And um, we also uh, send out welcome to those who are watching us at home or wherever they get uh, Facebook or YouTube. And uh, a reminder to them that we have our communion time at the end of our service. And so for you who are at home, uh, if you have a cracker or if you have uh, maybe a soft taco and some juice or something, you can uh, join in as we approach our communion time. That said, let us bow. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for being our God, our creator, our sustainer, and most importantly, our Savior through Jesus Christ and his precious blood. And we thank you, Lord, for your church. We thank you, Lord, for our being able to gather as the called out ones, the ecclesia, to be able to worship you here today in spirit and in truth. And we ask our ask your blessing upon us as we have so gathered. Bless those that are still uh, confined to their homes, those that will worship with us just as much as though they were here. Give us these blessings, Lord, as we exalt your holiness, uh, your greatness. We pray, dear Lord, that you might bless us in this time that we share. Uh, may you be pleased with our efforts, and may we recognize that you are the audience. May we all participate in this thing called worship. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and for his sake. Amen. Amen. And see you. Number 116. All of the verses are in your bulletins. It's Blessed Be the Name, and we will do the first and last verses. <laughs>
put uh, Larry Reamy up here. And somebody said, oh, is it an honor to be at the top of the list? No, it isn't. That just means we're probably more concerned about that person this week. And Larry Reamy has surgery this Thursday. So our, our prayers and thoughts are for him and also for Linda. Uh, continue to remember Bev Murner, also Ed Murner. Good to see him today. Um, uh, also, uh, Elaine Furlow, Bob Osborne, Christy Bersolino, Lynn Redfro, John and Kay Bullock, Emily Flood. Now, she's been scheduled July 27th, so remember her. So, it's good to see Norma and Reed here with us today. I failed to mention you early on. Uh, also, Emily's mom, Emma J Jacoby. Tacey Sobeck, remember her. Remember Norma Whited, my mother-in-law, who Jill is taking care of today uh, up in Bond County, and they're tuned in watching us live. Jeannie Davis, Lyndall Reese. Uh, got a couple requests here. Uh, David Gully, remember him, and also Dave Biggs in our prayer time. Also, this COVID-19 pandemic is not done with us yet. So be, be praying for our nation as we go through this uh, terrible time, unprecedented time of disease. Remember lost loved ones, travelers, missionaries, the military. Remember our nation and our nation's leaders. Now, are there any other requests that maybe I have forgotten or additions, subtractions? We mentioned that Christy Bursolino is... Uh Six weeks in, uh, her, her chemo. Her chemo. Yes. I think. Wait a minute. Oh, it's radiation. Oh, it's radiation. Okay. All right. Is she doing okay? Or she's doing pretty good. It makes her really tired. But other than that, she's okay. Christy Bursley. Okay. For our prayer time number five seventy two, he hideth my soul. Again, first and last verses. God in heaven, we thank you so much for this day you've given us. We thank you for that rain we received last night. We know it comes from you. This will help the farmers grow their crops and provide for their families. And we also thank you for the farmers because they provide for us too through, from you. We ask you now to be with us as we gather together. We lift praises up. We worship you, Lord, as you are the Lord of lords. 
the one that gives us life and sustains our life. And we pray your hand upon this country now as it, it needs you and its life and its government, even though they don't seem to think so. We ask you, Lord, to strengthen them and help us to get through this, this pandemic as it's growing stronger again. We pray that you can take care of it as you can do. Pray you're with those that we've mentioned, the health issues, any that might have to travel. We just pray you're with Kurt and his message today, that we might be strengthened with it, because that's why we gather together for strength. Forgive us now of our sins. Jesus died on that cross for, and it is in his name we pray. Amen. Our invitation hymn today will be number 334, Only Trust Him, and Kurt, Christie, and I have a special this morning. song. I like happy songs because I like the thought that this world is not my home or yours as Christians. We're pilgrims, we're sojourners, we're just passing through. Our citizenship is in heaven, scripture tells us. Matthew chapter 7, I would like to uh, kind of add a little bit to that in the few minutes that we have together to share a message this morning. Matthew 
chapter 7, the Gospel of St. Matthew, and uh, verses 13 and 14, uh, we read, Jesus tells us, Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. Because narrow is the gate and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are few who find it. <clears throat> this world is not our final destination. A large Native American settlement, as large if not larger than the Cahokians, maybe some of you have been to the Hopia Mounds near St. Louis. In fact, contemporary with them is where the Hopewell tribe was located eight miles from my house. I have hunted the fields. I have found artifacts. And uh, these last 10 years, there are carvings on the caves, on the walls. And we have found what are called caches that show that even the most primitive cultures had this belief that life goes on beyond this life. They would make things for the next life that weren't used here, but were going to be used later on. We are pilgrims. We have no permanent dwelling. We're just passing through. In our text, Jesus tells us that there are only two destinations beyond this life. We're either heaven-bound or we're hellbound. And we choose the destination by our journey here. Jesus says about one, you enter in at the narrow gate. And he says, wide is the gate and way is broad that is broad that leads to destruction. And he has many are on that road. For the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to heaven. Jesus says, few find it. Few on that. So Jesus is saying there are two roads, and we can't always tell whether we're headed in the right direction by the movement of the crowds. Any of you tried getting over to uh, Heron lately? Uh, well, it's no problem if you go from here, probably, through Ziegler. But uh, from my house at Murfreesboro, they've got a, quite a detour where they want us to turn around and come at, at Hearst Bush and come all this way up here to 149 Royalton over to Ziegler and over. And Well, they've got a sign in this little community that says only local traffic. And Jill and I, were, we had a deadline. She had a doctor's appointment over here and we're heading over that way and here's the detour we didn't know about. But we got behind a car that seemed to know where they were going. And we followed that car, and it went to us this way and that way, and it all worked out right. We followed them. In fact, other cars were going in that direction, too. So sometimes you can follow the crowd, and you'll be all right. If you go to an event, something at a stadium, and, and you see a lot of people are going that way, we might conclude, yeah, that must be the right way because it seems like everybody's going in that direction. But when it comes to the journey to heaven, Jesus says it doesn't apply. It, it doesn't apply because he's saying actually the opposite is true. We are in the minority. Three quick points. First of all, to be heaven bound means we must journey with heaven bound living. Now I know a lot of you have never ridden on a train. You've never traveled by rail, but the same point that I will make could apply to uh, air travel. But I'm old enough, we took a lot of trips by rail. And passenger cars, passenger trains, they'd have a baggage car stuck up there near the engines. And uh, But we didn't use those baggage cars because all we would ever bring is carry-on luggage. And on those passenger cars we rode, there was a rack above where we sat. We could put our luggage up there. When I was six years old, we took such a trip. Illinois Central up north and then over on the uh, then Canadian National. and then to, Well, we went to Buffalo, New York. And the train left real late at night 
out of Union State, or I guess Union Station, Chicago. And uh, what happened was it's overnight and we're not in a Pullman sleeper, we're just in a coach. And for the first time in my life, I was required to sleep without my pillow and without my stuffed dog, Rough Rough, which was bad enough, those things were left behind. And I could not sleep. And because I couldn't sleep, I pitched a fit. No one on that train car was going to get any sleep that night. So the conductor walked by, wanted to know what the problem was, and somehow or the other, my dad talked to him, and for 15 cents, I was given a pillow to use. And uh, on the way back, it was another night trip, overnight, and I didn't have to throw a fit. My dad coughed up the 15 cents right away for use of a, uh, a pillow. So I could get some sleep, so they could sleep, and everybody on that path. But I didn't understand why I couldn't just bring my pillow from home. And uh, so, like I say, we traveled back, and my dad uh, got home, and he said, "Now, son, you owe me thirty cents for them pillows." I, but here's the point. Here's the point I'm trying to make. On those trips, and we made a lot of trips. That was the longest trip I remember. We carried as little baggage as possible. We're all on a heaven-bound trip, and we've got some baggage that we can't carry with us, that we need to discard, whether it's bad attitudes, bad habits, wrong priorities. But keep your pillows, I guess. That narrow road to heaven is too narrow for you to be weighed down with all that baggage, with all that luggage. You can't carry it, second of all. God gives us the freedom to choose our own destination. Now, when we traveled, which we did extensively in the summer, now you can imagine, little old me, I did not have a voice when it came to where we were going to go and how we were going to get there, what line we would take. And we rode several, the Illinois Central, the Grand Trunk Western, the Canadian National, the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy, the Chesapeake and Ohio, the Chicago Northwestern, the Great Northern. So I've inherited my love for railroading from my dad. But, um, you know, we traveled a few lines, and we got to choose what line, and we got to choose our destination. Now, from Murfreesboro, my hometown, to St. Louis, we could go any which way by three rails, the Missouri Pacific, the Gulf Mobile in Ohio, the Illinois Central, or we could have even gone by bus. But the destination was of our own choosing, and God has given us the freedom to choose our destination. But you know what? It's a lot different than those trips of my youth. Because those trips, our family, we all came back home. We all made a round trip with God. Our final departure is a one-way journey. There is no return trip. There are no transfers. Wherever we wind up, we're there to stay for a very, very long time. Matthew chapter 25, verse 34, Jesus says, and beckons, Come you who are blessed of my Father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. That's heaven bound. Revelation 21, the first three verses, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, and he shall dwell among them. And they shall be his people, and God himself shall be among them. That's heaven bound. Jesus also says, Matthew 25, verse 41, Depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal fire which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. Friends, that's, that's hell bound. Revelation 20, verse 14, And death and Hades were thrown into the lake of fire, the second death, the lake of fire, and that's hell bound. The Bible is clear. Those are the only two options. Which is it going to be? The old preachers used to preach it. And I, I still believe it. Not too many preach it anymore, so not too many believe it. But they would say, there's a heaven to gain and a hell to shun. Amen. They don't preach much about hell anymore. Thirdly and lastly, God supplies the transportation for our heaven-bound journey. Now early in his life my father worked for the Union Pacific Railroad and he loved steam locomotives 
And on a distant day in 1956, my cousin Frank, who fired steam on the Illinois Central, had told my dad that they were taking out of service the steam engine that ran the, the St. Louis local from Carbondale, St. Louis, and back. That locomotive was a 462 Pacific, number 1155, and it would be taken to Paducah and scrapped if my dad didn't get my mom and brother and I to ride behind that steam engine. And he says, remember this all your life. My transportation was a steam engine provided by the Illinois Central Railroad. Now, the vessel for our heaven-bound trip is Jesus Christ provided by Almighty God. Jesus says, John 14, verse 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He didn't say I'm one of the ways, I'm partial truth. Uh, he says he is exclusive, the exclusive route, the exclusive way. For he says, no one comes to the Father except by me. Our journey to heaven is in Christ and Christ in us. John 15, verse 4, abide in me, Jesus says, and I in you. He is saying, all aboard. When we abide in him, our journey is going to take us to where Jesus went, heaven bound. John 14, verse 28, he says, I go to the Father. See, when we abide in him, our journey takes us to where Jesus is. John 14, in my Father's house are many mansions, many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you, behold, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again. And I'll receive you unto myself that where I am, you may be also. As I mentioned a little while ago, when I was a kid... We had three rail lines that could get you to St. Louis from Murfreesboro, plus bus lines. But there's only one way to the pearly gates. There's just one way that'll take us to heaven. His name is Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to wrap it up. I recall one year, we traveled by train, we hit a cow. Another time, it was a very hot summer. And in our travel, the air conditioner was out on the passenger car, and I had a brilliant thought, well, let's just raise the windows. It wasn't one of those kind of paths you couldn't. Boy, we, we, we roasted on that trip. Our arrivals sometimes would be delayed. Sometimes there were detours. Some who traveled, we didn't, but others had derailments. We went through bad storms. And here's the point. In our journey to heaven, it can get very bumpy. There'll be storms. There'll be detours. There'll be challenges. There'll be difficulties. And Satan has a long black train that he wants us to board. His train also has a destination. And if we're on the main line with the glory bound train, Satan is standing at a switch trying to sidetrack us. Or better yet, derail us and send us in the opposite direction to the opposite destination. But you see, there's only one track to heaven and only one line that gets us there. If you haven't already, we have an invitation, hymn 334. You need to choose the right line who is Jesus who will only take you to the right destination, which is heaven call this morning is all aboard as we stand and sing 334. <laughs> Yeah. 
communion time where he will be number 239, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. And again, first and last verses only. <laughs> said, this is the only way by which we go to heaven, through Jesus Christ, who died so that we can have everlasting life in heaven. He gave his life, his body, his blood, which we are, these emblems represent, that uh, we unworthy are worthy. Today I'm going to read to you from the gospel according to Matthew, 26th chapter, 26th through the 29th verse, concerning these emblems and Jesus telling us to take of them as we gather together. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Our kind and gracious Heavenly Father, we again thank you for this Lord's Day, for all thy many blessings. We thank you for the freedom and the privilege that we have to be able to come into this house and come before thee at this table. We pray that you can bless this bread which represents Jesus' broken body and this cup which represents the blood that Jesus shed on that cross. pray that you bless all those who are about to partake praise all these things in Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> service to our at-home viewers, a few announcements, or at least uh, one regarding Operation Christmas Child Shoe Boxes. The uh, items for June are listed, but uh, June's coming to an end. Uh, Curtis, do you have a, a, a listing for our July? Yeah, that'll be coming out next week. Next week. Well, we'll have list for okay, small items, usually that'll fit. Toys was the theme this, this month, uh, things that'll fit. If, if nothing else, Paul, would you dismiss us, please? Let us be standing, and then following our dismissal, we'll leave the air, and then we will have our communion time. 